What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here, welcome back to another video. So I've got something here that's a bit outside of my normal wheelhouse, but I thought I would cover it anyway, because of course, unless you've been living under a rock, you would have heard by now that one of the biggest or the biggest tech channels on YouTube was hacked, Linus Tech Tips of course, uh, due to a phishing email where basically somebody posed as a video sponsor and got somebody on his team to download a piece of malware and execute it on the computer that had access to the YouTube accounts and of course the session token was hijacked and they were able to gain access to the accounts and start streaming uh, Tesla streams and Bitcoin scams and all of that kind of stuff. So unfortunately this is an issue that's been prevalent on YouTube for well over a year and in this video I wanted to cover my experience with the same kind of scam because back in December of last year I did also receive one of these uh, phishing attempts, I actually got the malware sent to me uh, from one of these people posing as a video sponsor. So I didn't make a video about it at the time because I thought that this issue had been mostly put to bed at that point, since there were other channels like malware analysis channels who had already done deep dives into the issue. I felt like, you know, the scam was probably dying down at that point. However, apparently not. Apparently there's still people falling for it today. So I wanted to go ahead and just show you guys my experience with this, some of the things that you can do to avoid it, as well as actually just taking a look at the malware itself. So let's go ahead and check this out here. So in my situation here, I got this email from somebody who was posing as a NordVPN representative. So as you can see here, they say, hello, dear influencer, I'm advertiser of NordVPN. We have some unusual software that we would like to promote on your YouTube channel. We think this collaboration would be perfect for both you and us. Would you like an unusual collaboration? So this is the line that first aroused my suspicions because I was like, you know, it's just worded very strangely. The fact they use things like unusual software. I mean, everybody knows what a VPN is these days. It's not really that unusual to get a VPN sponsorship. And also you can see, you know, it's just the way they word things, you and us. It's just a bit odd. And then also, of course, you have the actual email domain not coming from nordvpn.com, but coming from centrum.sk which isn't too strange in and of itself because you do get ad agencies, marketing agencies that will represent a company and reach out to the influencer on their behalf. So they won't necessarily have the same email domain. So, but it still raises a bit of an eyebrow. So at this point, I was kind of 50-50 on whether or not this was a scam. And of course, if you have any doubts about a sponsor email, you should definitely reach out to the company directly by going to the website nordvpn.com, finding the contact us section, and then emailing them there in a separate email and asking them if this you know sponsorship is legit if this comes from them and they will let you know and that's really what you need to do but uh, in my case i was kind of excited i wanted them to send me a piece of malware i was kind of hoping this was a phishing scam so i went ahead and got chat gpt to write a response and then they sent this follow-up email which actually looks pretty legit this was probably copied from a real sponsorship email because this is typically what you get um, when you agree to do a sponsorship. They will send you examples of other sponsorships they've done with other YouTube channels to give you an idea of what they're looking for. This is pretty typical. So that actually looks pretty legit there. And then of course, they also asked me for my rate. I gave them a number and then they responded here once I had supposedly agreed to work with them. So as you can see here, they say, we're glad that you've agreed to work with us. What you need to do with this promotional contract, install the archive on your Windows computer. You can find the archive via Dropbox or the Google Drive link. Unzip the archive. Your password for the archive is NordVPN promo. If you can't unpack the archive, install WinRAR and then read the contract. Please fill out the contract that is in the archive. After you fill it out, please send to our email promo at nordvpn.com. And please don't just write to this email. Just send a copy of the contract after you've done all this email me to transfer you 50% advance payment for the work. All of this will take you five minutes of your personal time. So obviously, you know, I knew 100% this was definitely a scam at this point that they were trying to steal my YouTube channel. Okay, it's not too unusual for them to actually send files because of course, sponsors will send you like promo video for you to use in your integration, maybe lower thirds, assets, stuff like that. Um, but sending you a contract is maybe a bit unusual. I've certainly not had to deal with that from any actual legitimate sponsors. And as you can see here, the big red flag here is of course the password protected zip file. You shouldn't need to password protect the zip file if you're just sending it one-on-one -on -one to me. Why would you need to password protect it? And obviously when you password protect a zip archive, 
then antivirus scanners are not able to view the contents and they're not able to scan it. That means Google will not identify it as a dangerous file and neither will your antivirus until it's extracted onto the computers. Of course, once I actually managed to get them to send me the malware, I went ahead and spun up a virtual machine to take a look at it. So if we take a look at it right here in VMware, we've got NordVPN promo contract for YouTube. We're going to open this up and extract this with 7-zip over to our computer. And this is the point that you should never get to. You should never get to the point where you're actually downloading it and could potentially run it on your computer. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and just do it for science, I guess. So we're going to do NordVPN promo and we're going to extract the archive. OK, there we go. So we have extracted it right here. So if we take a look at the file, we've got a few files here. I checked all of the other files. They're all pretty standard files by the looks of things. The one that's the actual virus, of course, is this file right here. Nord VPN promotional contract and payment information. This is the file that they're telling you to open and sign. Like it's a contract that you need to sign and send it back to them in order for them to make payment. So that gives the kind of urgency on the YouTuber who wants to get paid to just do this. And the issue, of course, with this, there's a few things, uh, big red flags straight away. Uh, obviously, the file size is very suspicious. Why is it 700 megabytes if it's just a document? A document should not be 700 megabytes. That's a very large document if that is indeed what it is. It's also a screensaver file, as you can see here, .scr, uh, which is a screensaver file. The interesting thing about SCR files is they are treated as executables, just like .exe files. So as you can see here, this program, if I double click it, this is a little payload injector for the PS4, a little basic application that's a .exe. But if I rename and change the file extension to .scr, you can see if I double click it, it still opens it just like an executable. So, you know, SCR files are just as sketchy as EXE files because Windows treats them in the same way. So anyway, we head back here to our virtual machine. Then I've seen other ones where they will do things like .pdf, which is a normal document file, and then they'll do .scr. So .pdf, .scr, so that if you do have file name extensions turned off, it looks like it's a PDF file. And you'll just like take a quick glance at the file extension and see, oh, look, it's a PDF. It's fine. And, you know, it's not an executable and you could end up running it. But if you actually show file name extensions, you can actually see it's a .scr. So that's one of the issues right there that I've seen being done. So anyway, what I do is I rename this to .bin or a file extension that is not an executable so that you know, I can't accidentally run it by double clicking it because it's very easy when you're copying files around, when you're moving the file, you're selecting the file, it's pretty easy to accidentally launch it. So renaming it to a different extension where it's not executable uh, is definitely a recommended step here when we're analyzing this file because you never know, there is malware out there that's actually so advanced that it can bypass uh, virtual machines and infect your host system. So another thing that you should always do if you're suspicious about a file, especially if your antivirus is not detecting it as a virus, is to upload it to VirusTotal. And one of the protection measures that um, these hackers are doing to the file is they're over inflating the size of the file. You can see the fact that it's 700 megabytes means that it's too large to be uploaded to one of these online scanners. You can see max file size is 650 megabytes and they've got the file size at just over 700 to stop you from uploading it to virus total. So of course we can use a hex editor like HXD and we'll throw this into the hex editor. So you can definitely see the MZ, this program cannot be run in DOS mode and the PE definitely shows that this is 100% an executable file and not a document if there was any doubt still. And if we scroll down, you know, we've got the actual application here, but if we scroll down a bit further, we just get to null data. So this is all extra padding that they've added to artificially inflate the size of the file. And a lot of the time they'll just do this to the end of the file to make the file larger. But in this case, they also have some actual data here at the end of the file as well. So if you just trimmed off the whole end of the file, you would end up corrupting it. Uh, so they put the padding in this case kind of in the middle of the file to make it more difficult, I guess, to uh, maybe remove it or something. But anyway, what we can do here is we can just select one of these uh, locations here. We'll right click, select block, copy the start offset, and then we'll scroll down further down here. 
to maybe let's just go, I don't know, round about here. And then we'll right click and we will select block, put in that start offset and highlight that whole section and then delete it to make this much, much smaller. And then we'll go ahead and save the file right here. So now the file should be small enough. So we've now turned it into a 25 megabyte file and we'll go ahead and upload this to VirusTotal and see what we get. So let's go ahead and drag this in and see what we get here. Confirm upload. Okay, so as you can see here, we got 24 detections out of 51. I do kind of regret not doing this video back in December, mainly because back then there were no detections from this whatsoever. It was actually managing to hide itself pretty well, but obviously since the antivirus definitions have updated since then, it is indeed being flagged still. And we can also check behavior. Behavior will normally tell us, you know, what the actual file is doing on our system here. And there actually isn't much information, and that is because it's detected obfuscated files or information, obfuscated with Smart Assembly. So Smart Assembly is a free obfuscator for .NET applications, which basically means that the source code has been scrambled to make it more difficult to read. Also, I guess, makes it harder for potential antiviruses to be able to make sense of what the file is actually doing as well. Because it's a .NET application and it's using Smart Assembly, which is a well-known obfuscator, we can try to de-obfuscate it and unscramble the code back into a more readable format using a free de-obfuscator called d for dot uh, which does support smart assembly deobfuscation. So all I'm going to do here is take the actual file. In fact, we can actually take the original 700 megabyte file because d for dot will also remove the padding that is added to artificially inflate the file. We'll take the original file here and we'll go ahead and drag that into d for dot And you can see it running right here, detected smart assembly. As you can see, cleaning renaming all obfuscated symbols, and then it's saved it to the dash cleaned version. So we now have a 356 kilobyte file, which is more like the real size of the actual malware itself. So if we now take this file and put it into VirusTotal, so we'll open up another VirusTotal window, and we'll take the deobfuscated version and drag it in. So this time you can see we get 50 antivirus detections, so a much higher ratio. And if we go into the behavior section, we should be able to see more information on it. As you can see here, we've got Windows Management Instrumentation. So it's doing stuff to try and detect uh, virtual machines. We also have Privilege Escalation. So Process Injection allocates memory in foreign process, injects a PE file into a foreign process, and writes to foreign memory regions. And then also, if we scroll down further here, we also have Credential Access. So it tries to harvest and steal browser information, history, passwords, etc. So there we go right there. And then if we scroll down further, you can see it also identifies it as a red line stealer. So red line malware, uh, which again is the type of malware that harvests your browser information and other information on your system. And then we also have some IP addresses that it's uh, contacting here where it will probably be sending the data to. And these IP addresses originally resolved to somewhere in Russia, but since it's been a few months, they don't resolve to that location anymore. And uh, yeah, one other thing I noticed when I actually tried running this in a isolated uh, remote machine, there was some kind of modification being done to vbc.exe, which is the Visual Basic compiler. So that might be the executable that it's using for the privilege escalation, perhaps. I also opened up the file in DNSpy to have a quick look at the source code. And there were a few things to note in there. There was what looks like some kind of payload that's hidden inside the application, which is just a sequence of bytes stored as an array. So this could be a file that they're then writing somewhere on the computer and executing, or it could be a payload that they're using to inject into a foreign process. So that's hidden there as well. We also have some code here that executes a process. Uh, so we've got process start info and it's using the flags of create no window equals true and use shell execute equals false, which means you will not have any visual identifier that it's actually loading a process. And then also we can see here that it's doing something like perhaps writing a file and setting the file attribute to hidden to try and hide it from view. And then also we have some more code here that seems to be either modifying or creating a DLL, an assembly, and then loading that assembly on the system. So definitely some sketchy stuff going on there. 
And uh, yeah, just general things to look out for. Obviously, if you receive one of these sponsor emails, if you're a YouTuber and you receive one of these emails, you can use an ICANN lookup on the email domain. There's lots of like online ICANN look lookups you can use in your browser. And you can just go ahead and check that to make sure it matches just in case you, if they're trying to change their email domain to make it look like the company, but it's slightly different. So instead of like nordvpn.com, if their email address is something like at nordvpp.com or something like that, then, you know, you can check that obviously in an ICANN lookup and then you can see if they resolve to the same place. And if they don't, if they go to completely separate servers, then you know that this is probably pretty sketchy and that you probably just should ignore that email. And of course, if it's coming from like a different email address, then of course it could be a marketing agency or somebody that's representing the company. But just to be sure, you should go to the actual, you know, brand's website and find the contact us section and then actually email them to see if the sponsorship email is legitimate or not. Definitely worth doing. And uh, yeah, obviously, if you do get to the point where you end up downloading something onto your computer, you should be doing things like checking the file extensions. If it's a really large file as well, like it's 700 megabytes or larger, something that's too big to fit in one of these antivirus scanners like VirusTotal, and that's a big red flag. If it is small enough, then you can upload it to VirusTotal or Hybrid Analysis, and they'll tell you, you know, they'll give you a good indication on whether or not it's a virus or not. So yeah, anyway, those are my recommendations. So hope you guys enjoyed this little video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.